How are we doing folks? Or should I say, hi? And why should I say it like that? Because I am a massive fan of the EEV blog channel on YouTube. Now, why am I straight away plugging another channel? The reason being is because apart from being a mechanical nut and liking uh, machines and knowing how machines work, I also like electronics as you have probably seen in some of my previous videos I've done on the likes of valve radios and electronic repairs. Now, I'm not good at it by any stretch of the imagination. Um, the uh, guy from the EEV, EEV blog, Dave Jones, is an electronic engineer. I am not. I am, at best, an enthusiastic amateur. Um, at worst, a complete bodge artist. But the thing about it is, is I am a bit of a have-a-go hero. Now, where did that interest come from? For me, it came from a kit that my parents got me many years ago when I was a child, which was basically an electronics kit. And the reason this ties into the EEV Blogs uh, channel is because of this. It's debatable whether this, this can be classified as a children's toy or whether it is actually a, an adult's toy. And um, the reason being is that this is a really cool bit of kit and a great way to learn electronics even if you're an adult. Now, let's have a quick look at it because I actually, I used to have something similar to this when I was a child. This is a far more advanced version and this is the one that Dave Jones in EEV blog actually said that he used to have when he was a kid. So basically he got into electronics in the same way as I sort of did. I kind of went down a different path, but um, you know, that's how things go. But let's have a look at this because this is great fun. And as I said, it is an incredibly useful tool when it comes to learning electronics. And what you have here is, we'll actually unbox it because it's better that way. This whole board here basically has a series of springs and a series of electronic components on it. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring you up closer and I'm going to actually show you around this board and you can see, what you, see exactly what I mean. Now, I have it wired up to do something very basic here at the moment. Over here you have resistors of various different values. So, for example, this one here would be a 470 ohm resistor. Um, you have a diode. Uh, I think a GE diode is a germanium diode. You have a ferrite core. You've got various different capacitors. There's uh, ceramic disc capacitors, electrolytic capacitors. You've got transistors and you have a relay, a pair of transformers, an input and an output transformers, there um, another pair of diodes there, your interface for your battery box here, and then you've got uh, a couple of ICs. This is a dual JK flip-flop, and this one is a quad 2 input NAND. I believe they're op amps actually. Uh, now I could be I could stand to be corrected on that. I am not an electronics expert, as I said. Uh, I just get a bit of fun out of these type of things. There's uh, terminals there on the front. These are all all the things that interface with the front the front panel. You have a speaker. You have a photo cell, LEDs, um, a key switch, a selector, more LEDs, a seven segment display, uh, a meter, and uh, rotary controls. If you have a look at the front. You have all your controls here. So, what can you do with all of this? Well, this is where the book comes in. So, what we have here is we have a fairly comprehensive book, which is geared at um, uh, children ages 10 years of age or older. Well, I'm older than 10. I'm 38, actually, so that, uh, that describes me. Some people call me a child at heart. You have all sorts of different... Um, instructional sheets and these are the kind of the basic projects and then you get into as you flick through the the book you have different uh, circuit diagrams and schematics so it kind of gets into the more advanced stuff the further through the book you go so you start out by kind of it'll show you how it's wired and um, there's numbers on each terminal and then you kind of get into this sort of stuff here so that's a uh, if you've tried using, to use the last project as a game, you might have had problems knowing exactly when you've hit the CDS cell because the sound may have only changed slightly. This improved version solves that problem since you only hear sound when you hit the target. So it's obviously something you shine a light at. So, um, CDS controlled oscillator. And a joke for Irish people watching my channel. What is an oscillator? 
It's a Connemara man who eats donkeys. <laughs> yeah, I know, it's bad. It's a bad joke, you know. That's why, yeah. That's why you guys come to this channel, isn't it? For my bad jokes. Anyway, if you're not Irish, you're not going to get that joke at all. So, uh, yeah, fair enough. Anyway, right, uh, so um, you have various different ways of using transistors, uh, functions of, you know, uh, capacitors in various different circuits. And it kind of moves you along as you go uh, as you go through it. Now, how it works basically is, let's say, for example, I have a very basic circuit here wired up, okay? Now, have a look at the front panel, and you'll see here, I'll turn off the light on my camera and get it to focus there. And a little paddle switch here. And you'll see when I press down the paddle switch, it turns on the light, okay? Now that's simply because of the fact that I've wired it in. Very basically, I've taken positive to a resistor, which in this instance is a 470 ohm resistor. From the other side of the resistor over to an LED, back from the LED, through a switch. So I'm actually switching it on the negative, which you're obviously not supposed to do, but I did in this instance. And then back to the battery. So, um, that's a very, very basic circuit. So you have a resistor, an LED, a switch, and that allows you to have a momentary switch, a momentary push switch on the resistor. And you use these, you do that by connecting the wires by essentially, you just bend back the spring, you poke in your wire in there, and then you let go of it. And then just that just grabs hold and it makes a temporary connection. So, job's a good one. Now you can be as inventive or creative as you want in this instance, and you can kind of uh, have a play with it and see what other uh, circuits you can come up with. I did make the mistake of overloading one of the transistors, so yes, I blew a tranny, and you can make all the jokes you want there, but that's what happened, so it now needs to be replaced. So I end up having to replace, I believe it's that one there, I did it ages ago, so, you know. An unfortunate, uh, an unfortunate error, um, basically meant that I overloaded one of the transistors and it's dead. So, it's a, I think it's a, it's a BC548, so it should be fairly easy to replace. I think I have a load of them somewhere, I'll have to go and look for them. But, there's other things that are still working on the board. Um, you know, I have just, just two BC548s, uh, two NPN and two PNP transistors. So, yeah, uh, there's other projects where you can build a radio which is why you have your ferrite core over here and there's also a speaker on the front you have a volume control and tuning control so the tuning control would be a variable capacitor um, the volume control would be a variable resistor or a potentiometer so yeah uh, basically that's that now to be honest with you as I said for the science geek this is a fantastic bit of kit, and I haven't seen anything that comes close to this for uh, like for the 21st century. I know, I know that most kind of uh, circuitry these days is a uh, surface mount and it's microscopic, and you don't open things like electronic components nowadays and find kind of true hole components too often anymore. It's all surface mount reflow solder kind of things which are really not user serviceable unless you're at the really advanced end of things but uh, which is kind of a shame to be honest with you but um, you know it does uh, you still can learn the fundamentals of electronics and if you decide to go down the route of actually uh, learning electronics and going and studying electronic engineering uh, th this is a great way to, to kind of get a start a foothold um, now in amongst all of that as well I am also and this is another uh, another channel plug I'm also uh, signed up to the patreon page for mr. Carlson's lab mr. Carlson's lab is another fantastic channel for the electronics geek particularly people like me who are into old-school electronics he does a lot of stuff with valves and big massive transformers and you know old school geekery i was watching a video there today where he took apart a an oscillator uh, in a switch mode power supply which was actually mechanical and it was a vibrating reed which switched between a pair of contacts on either side of it an incredibly noisy bit of kit and nothing like that is used nowadays in electronics that was from, from the 1950s but I was born in the wrong decade. I love all that sort of stuff, to be honest with you. You know, I mean, I've I've two 1970s cars, I've got four 1950s radios, I've got, you know, I, I love 80s music, you know, or stuff inspired by 80s music. Okay, I was born in the 80s, but uh, that is just me. So, uh, 
Yeah, um, and you can see the poster in the background, the Beatles, and the uh, vinyl wall clock, and Doctor Who as well, I love Doctor Who. Um, so yeah, anyway, it's a little bit of an insight into Enfloat, but yeah, look at it. Um, I just thought I'd uh, give you a bit of a run through on this. I'm going to have a bit of a play with it now and see what sort of uh, circuits I can come up with. But I strongly recommend going out and picking up one of these and seeing if there is. If you do hear of anything like this that is manufactured these days and can be bought uh, now, please do leave a, leave a comment and let me know because I'd love to know. I'd love to know, does such a thing exist anymore? Because back in the days, when I, like when I was growing up, not only did I have these, I also had chemistry sets as well. Now, fortunately, I don't go making anything to do, doing anything to do with chemistry anymore. <laughs> I say fortunately because then I'd blown myself up probably. But uh, that's not to say I don't take an interest in reading about... Uh, was well, another okay another another YouTube channel I like Scott Manley he does a lot of stuff to do with uh, rocket propulsion and um reading about various different kind of uh, rocket fuels that have been developed over the years you know hydrazine fueled rockets this kind of stuff I love all that kind of thing I'm a big science nerd you know and uh, Scott Manley is also another great channel well worth watching but um yeah anyway look please do comment please do like please do subscribe and um i i, I might uh, i might come back to this depending on the level of interest uh in this uh this little electronics kit in the meantime i also do have another two valve radios which i need to replace all the capacitors in so i need to make a list of all the capacitors i have to buy um i buy a lot of my uh, electronics components from mauser.co.uk uh they're a good site but they're shipping costs are a bit prohibitive if you're not buying a massive amount of stuff if it's over 50 euro then fair enough but if it's under 50 euro they charge 20 euro flat fee which i think is a little bit rich to be honest with you especially when most of the stuff could arrive in the blister pack you know but anyway look that's neither here nor there um anyway folks i will chat to you soon thanks very much for watching and the name again of that is science fair 201 electronic project kit I believe they were supplied by Radio Shack originally over in the US, but um, yeah, I bought this second hand on eBay.